Hello everyone, I just wanted to make a, a short video this morning. Um, I'm going to be in 2 Kings 7, 3 through 9. Um, and it, it says, And there were four leprous men at the gate, at the end of the gate, and they said one another, Why sit here till we die? <clears throat> Until we die, the the scene at that time was uh, there was a famine in the land, and um, people were starving to death. Uh, these are four leprous men, and uh, there's nobody going to help them. They're not going to help a leprous person, famine or no famine. Must, but uh, so they were in a uh, bad bad condition, and so I. King James is a little hard in, in those dials and shouts and things like that. So I like to put it in the common lang language. And to me, uh, it was like they were having a leper board meeting. And and it and it said there, um, if we, why sit here until we die? If we say we will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city and we shall die then. And if we sit here, we die also. Now therefore come and let us fall into the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we should but die. So they, they had this board meeting and one of them said, uh, hey, we're going to die. And somebody else said, well, we're going to uh, die. if we Let's go somewhere if we're going to die. Others said, well, if we go, we're going to die. I said, well, if we're going to die, if we hear or are going, let's, let's at least die going. So, um, uh, let's see. So, and they rose up in the twilight to go to the camp of the Syrians. And when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there. For the Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots and a noise of horses. And uh, even the noise of a great host and they said one to another, Lo, the king of Israel hath hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come upon us. Wherefore they arose and fled in the twilight and left their tents and their horses and their asses and even the camp as it was and fled for their life. And when the lepers came to the othermost parts of the camp, they went into one tent and did eat and drink and carried thence silver and gold and raiment and went and hid it and came again and entered into another tent and carried thence also and went and hid it. Then they said one to another, we do not well. This is the verse I want you to hear. We do not well. This day is a day of good tidings and we hold our peace. If we tarry till the morning light, some mischief will come upon us. Now, therefore, come that we may go and tell the king's household. So they debated uh, when, they, when they were going to the king of Syria, uh, the Syrian camp. I think they saw the things that they let, the Syrians left in such haste that there was things on the side of the road. So they got to the camp and there it was empty. And these lepers, uh, oh, don't you know they were happy? They found the food that was missing in where they came from. And I imagine they eat till their little stomachs was busted nearly. And uh, they're just trying to debate about what they should do about this great find that they had, this great discovery. <clears throat> and so maybe one of them said, we need to help help our fellow countrymen back there starving. And the other one said, they wouldn't help us. So uh, they decided to go back and help them. And that's what this is about today. Um, I had a heart attack in 2012. I was in CCU for four days, and I was in the hospital for seven days. Uh, my nephew is an orthopedic surgeon. He ran into the doctor that did the, uh, that helped me after the heart attack, and uh, he told my nephew, he says, uh, your uncle cheated death. He was at death's door. So I've got, so since 2012, I've got this second change. And uh, I want to help people with it. Uh, from about that point on, I debated about a radio program. And I hesitated because there was nobody doing one. They, they had in the past. I think Brother Jack Nelson, Brother Billy Parker, some of them had, <coughs> had a radio program. 
And so uh, I debated about that. And, and I decided that if I did not do that, I would do not, I would not do, I do not well to hold my peace. Um, I went to WRJL in Decatur. Well, actually it's in Eva. And, uh, and I did a radio program about a year and a half. I, I did, uh, I started repeating broadcasts, so I decided not to do that anymore. I ran into sickness. I had cancer and first one thing and another. So, uh, but I have those radio programs on YouTube. And uh, also, Brother Billy Parker had a website, freeholiness.net. And Brother Josh Parker, uh, Brother Josh Tabor, <laughs> no, he ain't a Parker, Brother Josh Tabor and Sister Tanya, I uh, sent them some of these sermons and they put them on there. So uh, this is not to replace uh, your church or you getting a church. Right now, we can't go. When I made those radio programs, I didn't know that we were going to have the coronavirus, so now I'm glad that I did. But this is not to replace church. You get in the church. We can't right now, so that's... And uh, it's not to replace your minister. Uh, I heard a story about a man that had a, a flat, and uh, he didn't have a jack. And here came a man along that had a jack. And the man said, could I help you? And he said, yes, I've got a flat. I don't have a jack. And this man said, well, I've got a jack, and I will help you. So he started, uh, he, he helped the man change the tire. So the man that got received the help told the man with the jack, said, how much do I owe you? And the man said, oh, no, I don't want anything. He said, oh, I got to. This is such a big thing that you did. I, I got to help you. And he said, I got to give you something. And the man said, if you want to do something, said, if you see somebody with a flat and you've got a jack and they don't have, and you help them, and you tell them to go help 10, and you help 10. You see how that's going? That'll be multiplication. Um, so we we want to help. We need to help one another with whatever we've got. Um, I know in the past, you know, some people feel like that. Uh, to me, if, if I have something to share on a scripture, maybe the Lord let me know something about it or, or whatever. And I think like the lepers were in their decision. Just let them let them get it theirself. I had to get it. I had to grope around for it. Let them grope around for it. Why should I just hand it to them? Uh, hours and hours of study at time. Uh, why, why should I? But I feel like in my heart of hearts that I'm supposed to share it with you. You may not want it, but it's just like eating at the table. If you, if you like what I... Say, well, take out some. If you don't, just pass it on. I remember the men that uh, went before me, uh, that uh, Brother Hubert Sampson, Brother Lige Holland. Uh, I could go talk to them anytime, and they freely opened their doors. I remember me and Brother Jack Kelly going. I had to travel 45 minutes to Big Cove. Brother Jack lived in Big Cove, Brother Jack Kelly, and still does. And... Uh, so I had 40, 40 minutes getting over there. Let's just say 45 getting over there. And 45 coming back, that's an hour and a half. And usually it would take Brother Lige about 30 minutes to get cranked up and started. He'd be telling us about his, uh, what happened in his boy when he was a boy. So now I've got two hours invested in this visit, and I haven't even heard anything hardly yet except his childhood. But I just hold on, and I wouldn't say anything. And... Uh, it was well worth it. Brother Lige, Brother Hubert, and these other men, they freely shared what they had, and that's what I I believe in doing. I never asked Brother Lige a question. I, I mean, I might have, but as a rule, I didn't ask him any question. I wanted his mind to be free to, to go to any direction it, that uh, it needed to go. So uh, I'll, I'll tell this, and then maybe I'll cut this video. It's going pretty long. But I remember at one time I, I went and saw Brother Obi McLean. Brother Obi had been married uh, and his wife died and his current wife had been married and her husband died. <clears throat> and they was just two old people uh, just there together. They heard each other's story so many times they could finish the story off. And that day he would talk and she would talk right over the top of him. 
And then she would talk and he'd talk right over the top of her. And um, so finally he said, he said, when my first wife was living, um, now this is Brother Henry McLean's brother. He said, when my first wife was living, said we ran out of food, said that night, uh, that was the last of it. Said there wasn't enough for us to eat. So I just watched, I just watched, uh, we just watched the kids eat. And we were happy about it. And said the next day, though, we didn't have anything. And said he lived in a duplex and there was a worldly woman lived next door. And he heard a knock. And he goes to the door and it's her. And she's got a tray with eggs and gravy and biscuits. And I don't know what all was on there, but he said, uh, Brother Dale said she even had my coffee on there. And he said, we all eat. And said, I was so full and, and just so happy. He said, I told my wife, I need to walk. It was in Huntsville, but then there was still some rural parts of it. And he goes walking. And when he uh, gets there to the fence, there is his landlord. And his landlord called him over there and said, Ovi, could you take a note downtown? And he said, yes, I can and uh, wouldn't doing nothing. So the man, he took, he waited for the man to write the note out. The man wrote the note, handed it to him, and Brother Obi said, I never one time looked at it. And uh, he, the man told him to take it to the Sturgey or the Sturdivant Bill, and I cannot remember which. But So he goes down there, he takes the note, he hands it to the woman, as the instructions the man gave him were, and he waited. And when he, when the woman came back, she they had boxes and bags of groceries. And he said, I walked down. I had no way to get those groceries home. I was so happy that the Lord had provided, but I did, had no way of doing that. And he said, I walked outside onto the, uh, whatever, the little porch thing, a little, little front of it. And he said, here came an A model by. And he looked up and it was Henry, Brother Henry McLean, his brother. And he said, uh, Obi, would you, do you need a ride? And he said, I sure do, Henry. And so the Lord provided for Brother Obi. And in today's time, I believe that the Lord will provide for us also. I wanted to tell us to have good courage. I want to encourage you. And like David, when the men were going to stone him, it said David encouraged himself. So take this encouragement, if it's encouragement to you, and pass it on to somebody else just like the man with the jack. And then tell them to pass on encouragement to somebody else, and we'll maybe we we can get through this like that. So may the good Lord bless you. Uh, as I say every time, if you need me, I'm here, and uh, I love you all.